Welcome back to part two of the Index In-Depth series for Chaos Knights. In this series, we are going through all of the army's indexes. We'll be breaking down in part one the army rule, the detachment rule, the enhancements and the stratagems. And in part two, we'll be looking at the key units. This is part two for the Chaos Knights army. So if you haven't seen part one, I'd recommend going back and checking that out. There's a lot more context to be had for which units make sense. And we'll be looking at all of the key units here, starting with the war dogs i've broken it down into war dogs titanic units and forge world units for chaos knights i think that made the most sense to me um obviously forge world units do slip into the two different sections but they're separate enough in my mind that i thought it was worth talking about them in their own separate section so for war dogs the key difference in my mind between imperial knights and chaos knights is not really the sort of the leadership stratagems or anything like that it is the reliance on war dogs as the backbone of your army as opposed to the larger titanic units in my mind you still probably want to run some of the larger titanic units um especially with the a way that towering interacts with overwatch you can do some very nasty things with the ability to cover the board with lanes of fire that are very difficult for your opponent to deal with. Um, but I think the, the war dogs are the real workhorses of the Chaos Knight army. And the stratagems really reflect that. As often, you know, a couple of the stratagems let you interact with multiple war dogs instead of just a single target. My number one pick for the war dogs are the brigands. The brigands are a fantastic unit. They were really good in 9th edition, and I think they've had a hell of a glow up coming into 10th. Coming from ninth, they've lost a point of AP on their um, chain cannons, which is a shame. However, they do have a data sheet ability, which gives them plus one AP against the closest enemy unit. This evens out the loss of AP there. In an addition where we've seen a lot of AP squatting, um, that's a very strong ability. They've also gone to ballistic skill two, which is a very strong shooting platform for you know the, a mid pipe price at time of launch they've come out at 150 points the other war dogs are between 135 and 160 so it sits quite nicely in the middle there you don't feel like you're paying through the nose for the brigands and they give you a really premium uh unit a really premium data sheet that you can do a lot of stuff with all of that stuff is shooting admittedly but it is very good quality shooting it comes with the melter spear and the um chain cannon both of which are you know task suited for killing either vehicles or tanks oh, sorry vehicles or infantry um, but it's it just covers all of what you need in one pop you can also take the non-line of sight weapon on the top the havoc launcher i think we'll see chaos knight players playing with those a lot initially anyway i think it's useful to have something to to fur components out of cover small units of say warp spiders or something like that you don't want to let them just sit there and play the game on their terms diametrically opposed to the brigands you do have the carnivore the carnivore is the full melee variant and it boasts an extra two inches of move on the other war dogs and its data sheet ability is it rerolls charges this is something that is very clearly task built for getting into combat and causing as much pain as possible like the brigand it has a two plus to hit weapon skill in this case and it has six attacks over the four that most of the war dogs boast this is a significant upgrade in melee capability and carnivores running around i've i've enjoyed pairing, playing them in pairs two carnivores can deal with most threats on their own especially with the strat support that they can get two carnivores will rip through most things you have either the chain glaive which you would only use for the sweep attack it gives you 12 attacks in total or you've got the claw which gives you a lot of attacks with a, a d6 plus two damage at a high strength both of these profiles are obviously suited for killing either, you know, hordes of infantry or more tough targets, but it really does punch through armor and melee in a way that most things don't in 10th edition. It's a, it's a very reliable melee profile, especially when you pair it with some of the other stratagems around. Then we have the Huntsman. The Huntsman is a unit that we didn't really see in 9th edition because it was effectively the same as the Stalker, but it had one less keyword. That is different now. It is slightly more expensive. It's five points more. However, its data sheet rule is reroll ones to wound and ones for damage against vehicle and monsters. This is a unit that has to take the um, the chain glaive and the thermal spear, the melter spear, I should say. So this is really 
suited for what it's trying to do. Rerolling ones into the tough targets with your melter, rerolling the ones and the damage when you inevitably roll that one and you're doing a flat three into a knight. It's a, it's a great unit. It's it's a workhorse unit. It's not something that I'm super excited to put in my list, but if I'm looking for that sort of next war dog to put in, this is where I would go. Finally, honourable let mention here, but it's the Stalker. The Stalker is the cheapest of all the war dogs, so you might take it on that basis. It's data sheet rule is if it is six inches away from if it's attacking an enemy unit that is six inches away from anything else which is actually quite hard to pull off you do get an offensive buff against it in my testing i haven't actually ended up pulling that off typically it's not mattered the reason i have it here as an honorable mention is that it is a character this is important because it means you can run a full war dog list if you wanted to do just you know the full i think it's 14 you can fit in the list you can just run one stalker as a character and then fill out the rest of your units with the more efficient units that we have above titanic units something to note here is with war dogs being the real workhouse backbone of the army titanic units are fantastic to buff the war dogs around them there are also some that are just good on their own benefits a middle ground here I have is the Knight Tyrant. So the Knight Tyrant, in my opinion, you're probably running the Flamer and the Harpoon loadout, the, the Valiant loadout in the Imperial Knight terms. This is obviously fantastically strong at Overwatch. You can pl plunk it in the middle of the board, give it, um, you know, make sure this is your Overwatch target. You'll be flaming something every turn when it comes out. And if the Harpoon connects... Lord have mercy, you're going to be skewering something. Putting a man side hole in a man, that's for sure. Um, it, however, it does give a buff to the war dogs around it. It has a six-inch bubble of light cover for all war dogs. Cover is quite easy to get in 10th edition. And I did just say light cover. I did just mean cover. Obviously, now there is no distinguishing between any types. It is quite easy to get cover. However, when you're pushing up to the middle of the board, this is nice to just make sure that your units definitely do get that buff. And it really does keep them feeling a little more survivable than, than they would have done. Saves you from having to spend CP to rotate iron shields. It's also a fantastic vehicle for the enhancements we talked about in part one, the Panoply of the Cursed Knight, which gives you effectively armor of contempt or minus one to ap of the attacks that target it makes it very hard to chew through on a t13 chassis with a two up save effectively a one up save with cover a lot of the time then we have the desecrator the desecrator is again a more of a buffing unit that you can take this has um it's not it's lost a lot of output in my eyes from the ninth edition variant in ninth edition it was a weapon skill two up beast it was almost as good a rampager in combat not quite as good but the data sheet ability was significantly better now it does give reroll one's hit to aura to the um the war dogs within nine inches of it which is very nice however i'm not sold on that in terms of the abilities that the knights bring itself are not as good as they were in ninth edition this is one that i've got my eye on and you shouldn't feel bad if you use it i think it has a great place to it but i think there's a forge world unit that you can slot in to do that job maybe a little bit better in my eyes uh still a solid unit though finally my key titanic units is the despoiler now the despoiler is the opposite of the two we've had above this thing doesn't really do anything to buff your war dogs i think it gives them plus one to their battle shock tests it makes makes them one better at taking battle shock tests i should say uh which is very rarely going to come up what it does do is it brings the guns you can put something on the top which is probably going to be uh i would think the havoc launcher the direct shot missile launcher that used to be quite good didn't go up in strength so now it's only strength eight ap2 d6 damage i really like just having a little bit more indirect on the top of that model However, it can have two of any gun. It doesn't have to have two of the same, but you can notably give it double melter. This is something that I've played around with. You can put it into strategic reserve and come in potentially 12 inches away from something. And the melter has got a real glow up. It is now melter six. So if you're within half range, you're doing D6 plus six damage. Each gun is 2D3 shots with blast. So it's kind of multi-purpose for killing anything you pointed at, apart from real hordes. Um, you can give it the rapid fire battle cannon. This is something if you're looking to soup in a knight, uh, Thousand Suns have an ability to strip armor saves away from enemy units with their cabal points. This is the unit that I'd be taking 
double rapid fire battle cannon just putting the pain downfield uh, you can also take the double gatling cannon the gatling cannon has gone up to 18 shots now it is an absolute marine killer and i think you should feel very pleased about having one of these units in your list if you do have one in your collection it's very much a selfish model it doesn't do anything to buff the models around it but sometimes you want something that just says look i'm going to make you respect the fact that i can shoot you stay behind that wall don't come out and then let the rest of the army do do its thing finally we've got the key forge world units there are a couple you could look at maybe the megara i'm not super in love with it the two that I am in love with are the Castigator and the Lancer. Now, the Castigator is my pick for possibly the best Titanic knight in the Chaos combined indexes. It is fantastic. It is a. It has a one of the Gatling cannons I was just singing, singing the praises of, the 18 shots, strength 6, AP 2, 2 damage. However, it is significantly faster than the Despoiler. I believe it is four inches faster, moving quite speedily around the battlefield, same as the Lancer. It has a fairly respectable mellow profile, but most importantly, it gives an aura of sixes to hit explode. It gives uh, sustained hits one to the war dogs within six inches of it. This is a smaller aura than the other auras that we've seen in the indexes. However, it's a significantly better aura. Sign um, sustained hits one is, is just a very strong rule to bring. Doesn't combine well with the stratagem to give you sustained hits. However, I feel like Chaos Knights have a lot of places to spend their CP, so I'm not super upset about losing that place of ability. The other key Forge World unit that we've seen is the Lancer. Now, the Lancer is more of a melee unit. It does have the, you know, weapon skill two. It is hitting quite hard in melee. The key thing for me about the Lancer is that it gives a six inch bubble of uh, all your war dogs can advance and shoot. It effectively gives them assault. This is very nice because you can advance and do actions currently in the game. Uh, if you have the ability to shoot, you can do the action, so you can advance, get that little bit further up the board, potentially do an action if needs be. But it also just lets you get around corners, get further than expected. Combining it with the stratagem to move two war dogs through a wall it is something that it's very difficult to screen a Chaos Knight's army out from shooting you. You can potentially put a couple of brigands in a position that your opponent really wasn't expecting you to get them and just absolutely decimate one flank of their army. Key to note as well, it does have a 4-up invun at all times, so you're not having to spend CP to give it a 4-up invun against shooting, but it also has the invun against melee. It is a beefy boy in comparison to what you'd pay points-wise for a uh, abhorrent class knight, which is the sort of middle-sized knight that we do see for the Chaos Knights. These were my key units. Thank you so much for watching. Do let me know if you have any thoughts about the format itself, if there's anything that you'd like to see more of going forwards. If you've got any thoughts about which factions we haven't done that, that you'd like to see, I'm going to be going through quite a few of them. I'll be honest, I'm not super bothered what order I do with them in. So if you want to see something, do let me know. I'm more than happy to move the order around to suit popular demand. Thanks for watching.